Yes, it's harmony and that changed everything, started. right? Yeah, yeah, like because then people were finally exposed to, um, like my style of writing and my way of working with an artist outside of the music, but really helping them find confidence in themselves and really telling their story and and really taking my time with them and, and tailoring this kind of song for them specifically. Uh, Christina's team reached out to me uh, after like. I had done um, In Common for Alicia Keys and um, like a few other like records, like of people mm -hmm. I guess that were on similar like labels or whatever. And um, after like the first time that we actually finally, like our schedules worked out, it was awesome because she became a friend. You finding, your, you finding yourself throughout everybody, all the other stuff that you had to kind of go through, you know? And, and, and she found her own, like, kind of interpretation yeah. of that concept as well. And Thank You Next happened. Hi, this is Lauren Engel. Today I'm here with Taylor Park. Hi. <laughs> So you're born originally in Dallas? Yes, I'm originally from mm -hmm. Skeet in Dallas, and then I moved to LA when I was like 12. Yeah. <laughs> Are your parents originally from Dallas as well? My mom is from Louisiana. Yeah, both of my parents are from Louisiana. Oh. Yeah. My mom is from Shreveport. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of down the yeah. street from Texas. <laughs> And when you were five, your grandma took you, was it to the church choir? Were you part of it or? Yes, I like definitely grew up singing in church. And from there it was like, oh, then I was classically trained. And then like I just started to become curious about all the different kinds of, I don't know, that's to like music, mm -hmm. you know, from songwriting to creating the beats. So like I just became curious about more. Yeah. And growing up, your mom was in the U.S. Army or? <laughs> yeah. What was, yeah. What was she doing there? I don't know what she was doing specifically because when I meet my mom, I'm like, yo. <laughs> uh, when I meet my mom, I mean, when I, not when I meet my mom. <laughs> when I see my mom, I am like, what? I can't even imagine her being like in the army, you know? And mm -hmm. and, and she had that whole life. You yeah. Know, so. so that was, oh, that was before you were born? Um, yeah, but actually after I was after I was born, she was still in the army. So oh. yeah, and then eventually she just started to do um, software uh, developing and and all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Were you more raised by your grandma then? In the beginning, like I used to go to spend so much time with her mm -hmm. um, because I was staying a lot with her because yeah. my mom was working, you know. And so then after that, I mean, you know, my parents they they do work a lot. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it was a lot of me. F finding hobbies you know what yeah. I'm saying me playing with my friends me playing with my cousins and like yeah just finding things to do mm -hmm. so my parents got home yeah how about your dad's <laughs> career my dad's career he's a mortgage underwriter oh. um so yeah like they both come from like completely different worlds than I do mm -hmm. um which is awesome because it allows me to have a different perspective yeah so, where do you think I your creative side from hmm. well even though my mom does like the tech um, side of things like she grew up playing music you know she's just very shy um, and I think that yeah both of my parents have creative kind of tendencies or they they both like they can sing like yeah. they can do, uh, but they would just have no interest in the music industry you mm -hmm. know so I think it was bound to happen um, but we didn't know that uh, obviously you never know if your kid is going to enjoy something that you do yeah you know? but I was lucky that they supported that and they got you a karaoke machine? Yeah. They got me a karaoke machine when I was like, I don't know, like seven or something like that. And um, yeah, they had some R&B songs on it. My parents um, are a fan of beautiful melody. Like those are the type of artists that they like to listen to, you know, mm -hmm. just like beautiful melody. So the Brian McKnight's, the Baby Faces, all of that type of, um, all those type of people, mm -hmm. you know. Was it your grandma's idea to enroll you in the dancing classes, or? No, I literally started to go to dance class because I had a friend um, at school that was going to dance class, and I was like, yeah, she was my childhood best friend, and I was just like, I want to go too. Mm -hmm. and it was like a summer camp, and it just sounded fun, you know? And then how long after until you met Debbie? I met her maybe a few months after, after oh, wow. that, because um, she came, and like, she's very hands-on with, um, with, with Dada, and like... She just showed up one day and was like, wait a minute, uh, is there anybody that can sing here? Because she puts on these plays like mm -hmm. uh, that are based off of like her books or 
other books sometimes. So this one was called Dancing in the Wings. And there was a character named Will Sassy. And, like, yeah, it was my first time that I was introduced to uh, acting. Yeah. You know? uh, was through her, for sure. Mm -hmm. And then how long after were you in her place, like, performing in front mm -hmm. of Will Smith? Probably until. from until I was 11. Uh, so eventually I would do, like the Kennedy Center with her for years, you know, and um, and kind of have this whole other world introduced to me, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and then 12, I mean, like, well, 11, 12, like, that's when she convinced my parents, she was like, yo, you should think about uh, moving her to um, L.A., and so at first it was, I went with her for the summer to L.A., and it was this kind of being like, okay, I'm going to my dance classes, I'm being trained in all these different types of dance, and I was never... Um, in love with dancing, but it was something that was a challenge for me, you mm -hmm. know, and it was something that wasn't my first thing that came natural, and so I was kind of like thrown out of my element, you know, and it was, it was kind of fun, yeah. you know, hard, very hard, because this is one of the best dancers, you know, in history, and so for that to be mm -hmm. one of her strong suits, and that for that, for me at the time, felt like my weakness. You know, mm -hmm. it was interesting. Yeah. Were you homeschooled then or how did you bounce school? I started to homeschool at, again, 12, like 12. That, that was a really turning period, oh. like a major turning period in my life because like I, I booked hairspray and like it kind of put me into a different type of mindset of I am a professional actress now, whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Was that shocking to you? Like everything came so quickly and easily because you didn't actually even really yeah. like ha have it in your mind so much. I think that usually, and when I've done anything in life and yeah. any type of um, like success that I've had, I'm so uh, focused on the next thing that sometimes, more so, I'm more guilty of not noticing that it even happened. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like not appreciating it, not. Uh, not 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 appreciating that's the word word but not realizing whoa shit like mm -hmm. you should just take a moment and think about the, the what you have accomplished yeah just for a second before you move on to the next thing mm -hmm. what was it like working with so many adults i guess you just matured super quickly then but, yeah for sure for sure but i've always been like growing up i was always told like oh you have an old soul anyway so like <laughs> a lot of people will be like it feels like you've been here uh before mm -hmm. and so like I don't know. I think that I've, I was always a bit of a, yeah, like a little mini adult. Although, you know, you can tell, I, even when I was a 25-year-old, mm -hmm. I still have that childlike uh, kind of, like, wonder, like, mm -hmm. curiosity, like, about me, um, which I like to keep. So in some ways, I was like, oh, I don't know how old you are. In some ways, it's like, I know exactly how old you yeah. are. <laughs> <laughs> and were your parents worried about you getting into the entertainment industry so young? Yeah, I mean, there's a, always so many things that you have to worry about, um, like it's in regards to me being a young woman, in regards to me being a, a young black woman. Like, mm -hmm. there's so many different traps to fall into, no matter yeah. who you are. And that goes beyond gender, where you're from, or race. But there's a lot of uh, traps in the devil's playground. <laughs> yeah. Stuff, you know? yeah. And at what age did it click to you that you just wanted to pivot straight into music? Hmm, probably like 16, 17. Like at that point, I was going to college and I literally was like, um, how can I like get back to what I love doing, what I'm willing to become great at, like what I'm willing to spend the time on and get my 10,000 hours in, you mm -hmm. know? And it was music. It wasn't like acting, it wasn't dancing, it wasn't any of those things, it was music. And I had to discover, well, what, there's a lot of different sides of the music industry. What side do you want to work on you know and then I started to learn all of these different like ways like whoa wait a minute like on the management side on the label side on the publishing side I started to yeah. just learn so much you know and you were were you studying some sort of like musical engineering or what were you studying no but I do engineer yeah um I was studying entertainment law though oh, okay um like I actually am like really fucking interested in mm -hmm. in the business side of the music industry I always have been because I guess I've always had to be uh, interested because I didn't have somebody holding my hand along the way. Mm -hmm. It was more of a figure it out, make a mistake until you figure out what's the right way to do it. Yeah. Know? Did you finish it or did you? I didn't. I yeah. didn't, but I will though. That's <laughs> the cool thing is because I always find myself missing school, which is 
something I'll get back to for sure. Mm -hmm. And you realize soon after that it was difficult for people to take you seriously in music because of the acting. Yeah, exactly. The same way that like people didn't take it serious of the, on the writing side because if you, you do music and now if you're an artist and then if you're a writer then people don't take you serious on the artist side and then it, it's like just one big thing of like proving to people that you don't have to wear one hat all your life mm -hmm. because the biggest people like kind of the biggest artists in the world they never had to you know yeah it's not until you prove that wrong that people realize oh yeah you can do that mm -hmm. you don't have to be boxing i forgot <laughs> How did you get into the music industry, though, initially? Um, just like friend of a friend, like going into like the studio, stepping into the into new rooms and being curious. Like, what's going on behind these doors? Who's over this? And then who's mm -hmm. that? And who's the publisher? And what's a who's their A and R? And that's how you get a placement. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, just figuring it out. Mm -hmm. And how long after did you meet? Was it Big John or? Mm -hmm. I met Big John when I was like. I don't know, like 19. And, um, yeah, I just turned 19. And I, I wasn't going to do a publishing deal at first because, I don't know, I found I was getting myself into the the right rooms, which I continue to do even after my publishing deal. But it was different because Big John, I had a support system and I had a very honest man that was working with me. And, like, he's now, like, my family. You know, that was mm -hmm. the main thing. It's like, you know what? Because for me, it's not about doing it on your own. It's what's the most efficient way to get it done. Yeah. You know? And if 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 you show there's value in you, like, being on my team, then that's all that matters to me. Mm -hmm. Like, in that way. And it, he was valuable in, in so many different ways, like, and just, like, a great person on top of it. Yeah. Did you already have a lot of songwriting credits after uh, before you signed with Warner? No, or I literally, because this is what I just, in you. yeah, they just believed wow, in me, I they just that. believed in me, like, that's it. Mm -hmm. And then soon after you wrote for Fifth Harmony? Yeah, Fifth Harmony. and then That changed started, everything, right? Yeah, like, yeah. because then people were finally exposed to, um, like, my style of writing and my way of working with an artist outside of the music, but really helping them find confidence in themselves and really telling their story and and really taking my time with them and, and tailoring this kind of song for them specifically. Yeah, and then how did you get more into the K-pop world like BTS? Mm. Well, I think that like the thing that's really cool about K-pop music is that they mix a lot of different genres. Yeah, it's like all in you one know? song. In one song. Yeah. So like it is kind of like what I was trying to do like what I was trying to do with all these different artists, like pop, and then I'll write a country song, and then mm -hmm. I'll write this, and then, but I have to switch artists to do that usually. But yeah. you mean to tell me you can give me a group that has like 10 people in it? Yeah. And then they have like five different genres in it? Well, this is knocking off all of my check marks <laughs> in one song. You so, got into K-pop now. Yeah, so yeah. like that was like the thing. So then I ended up doing like 21, and and Red Velvet, and BTS, and like all these different ones. That were, it was super interesting. Like that's the thing that... It's usually most things I do in life is because they were a challenge to do, mm -hmm. you know? And how did you work with Christina Aguilera? Uh, Christina's team reached out to me uh, after, like, I had done um, In Common for Alicia Keys and, um, like, a few other, like, records, like, of people, mm -hmm. I guess, that were on similar, like, labels or whatever. And um, after, like, the first time that we actually finally, like, our schedules worked out, it was awesome because she became a friend mm -hmm. you know like it was cool because I, we were able to have honest conversations able to have dinners and not work able to have sleepovers like I got her in a black mirror <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's it's it like fun and that's a part of um, making magical music for whoever you're writing with as far as writing mode goes you know mm -hmm. and was it surprising to you how quickly or how easily you were to place things with big artists mm. well I think the one thing that helps me out on the writing side is like knowing people. Mm. Like if you know people, then well that's what you that's who you're selling music to is people. Yeah. Real people and you if you can take the time and to humble yourself and to listen to other people's story and be able to project that out again by just listening and taking it in and really absorbing it, really asking somebody how their day was really asking somebody how it made them feel to get their heart broken or to 
can get it rebuilt again. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's what a song is. And so when you know people, the placements come. You know, when you take the time to just get to know somebody. And when you, you first met Ariana, what, back then and like when you were doing Nickelodeon, right? Yep, that yeah. was the very first time we met. Um, and it was interesting because, yeah, like we met on completely different yeah, we're territories. Yeah, both 18 like, or something. Yeah, and like acting and like it was a completely yeah. different world before people kind of took either of us seriously on the music side. Mm -hmm. And knew us as child actors. Yeah. And can you talk a bit about the story behind Thank You Next? It was kind of inspired by, was it Jane Fonda or something? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like she has a... a she has a like a documentary that basically yeah I really want to watch it. It's so good. It's so good. Like I'm I, like I'm a documentary like nerd. I love. Oh that my thing. god! I've seen I love probably them. all of them on it. <laughs> like, but um, I uh, was watching this and I was telling her about it the next day and I was like, yo, every chapter, um, she goes through. She wasn't obviously saying thank you, but she was just noticing that she would that she learned different things or took different things or molded herself to be a certain way for every relationship that she entered. Mm -hmm. And then she finally gets to the final chapter, which is Jane. And I was like, I like the concept of that. I like the fact that you finding, your, you finding yourself throughout everybody, all the other stuff that you had to kind of go through, you know? And, and, and she found her own like kind of interpretation yeah. of that concept as well. And Thank You Next happened, like continuing to pers like make it her story. And what did you learn from your, from each of these situations? Because she's had a tough year, and yeah. she's learned a lot, and she's grown a lot too. And so I wanted to show that growth that, mm -hmm. that I was able to see. Yeah, I love that. Did you always realize from the onset that you wanted to be a artist, like putting out your own music, and just was waiting for the right time? I don't know. I think I had to discover if I wanted to be an artist because I've never been someone who does. Uh, something for attention, right? Because I've mm -hmm. had like a lot of a lot of records come out or whatever, and over the years, but I'm just now finally kind of getting like noticed for it. it. Doesn't mean that I was not gonna continue to do it if if I never got the recognition yeah. for it, you know? Because I know that I did it, you know. Mm -hmm. But I think that as an artist, like I had to kind of only go through it to discover. Well, is this something that I like to do? Like I had to discover. Okay, do I like to perform? That's one thing that we have to figure out. Okay, let's go do a tour with Anderson Pack and find out if you, mm -hmm. if, if you like to perform. I like to perform. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it's something that I had to discover. Like I didn't know that I wanted that I liked to write music until I kind of dove into it. And but I wanted to make sure no matter what I did, which is why I think that I've been uh, timid before in like releasing music consistently, um, is because I wanted to make sure that it was genuinely who I was. Like when you're creating everybody else's role around you. Um, you have to be careful that you are saving some of you for yourself. Yeah, I love that. What would you say are your inspirations outside of music? Mm. Yeah, I feel like you've created a whole world and I'm like so obsessed with it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, give me the inspirations. <laughs> Man, like, I love to have conversations with strangers and friends. Definitely conversations are the biggest inspiration in a song. Um, I like to have fun. I like to do things for the first time. Mm -hmm. Like, if, in the moment that it's back, it's been too long since I've said, this is my first time doing this. It's like, oh, you got to get some more expense. You got to get some more living. And um, I travel a lot. Mm. Um, yeah, but like no cell phone service, right? Just like, really out literally <laughs> just out here in these streets. <laughs> How did your song with Khalid come about? Oh, that came about because uh, we were originally working on his um, album. And yeah, this is kind of in the beginning of uh, Khalid. Yeah. Know? Like, we did a song a while back, and then when it came around to doing my album, I mean, or my mixtape, uh, I was like, oh, you know what song is like really dope? And somebody who I really respect as an artist because I'm very um, particular with my features. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was just because I've worked with everybody, so I'm yeah. like, okay. I, I want my particulars to, uh, I want my th features to mean something, you know? Mm hmm And coming up, do you think you're going to cut back on the songwriting for other people to focus on your artist career? I wouldn't say cut back, but I, but I have been more focused on who I write for and what I, what I spend my energy on because mm -hmm. now I'm having to apply that energy to my artistry as well. I have to put just as much focus um, into myself if not more than what I do on other people and I put a, I put a hell of a lot of focus into 
that particular artist when I'm working on them. So I'll apply the same rules to myself. Yeah. And you have a, are you putting out an album coming up? Yes, yeah, so on yeah. April 5th, We Need to Talk is coming out. Yeah. Uh, it's about is, your first heartbreak, right? Yes, the oh first time that I'm on the other side of the love song. And, um, and, it, and it's, yeah, it was interesting because it's not that I've never been, I've never had my feelings hurt before. It's not that at all. It's just, it never mattered this much, mm. <laughs> you know? And yeah. this was, I think, one of those pivotal moments where I was learning this album overall, like the, the experiences that I was um, able to kind of learn taught me a lot about myself, which is, I think, the only reason why I was like, I felt like I had to, I had to put it in a song because it was such about, it was so much about my growth, you know, as a person outside of even the love. Mm -hmm. What clicked you to start your label, Taylor Mate? Well, I just know that I approach music and, and, and artistry in a completely different way than, than most of the labels that kind of I've, that I work with all the time mm -hmm. um, I just have a different perspective and there's room for those perspectives especially now um, and you say you have an artist like XL yeah. or you have a label like XL that does that approaches music completely different than like RCA or then or RCA does than Epic and they all mm -hmm. have their kind of thing that they do well but there's there's something there's a perspective that I want to add to music and and yeah, I'm building that vision. I'm yeah. excited to be able to have the freedom to do that with my own label. What was the reaction when you saw yourselves on, you saw yourself on Forbes 30 Under 30? Yeah, <laughs> very shocked. I was very happy because I remember um, a few years ago, like, uh, like crying because I didn't make it, and it wasn't like a oh, fucking I'm devastated cry. It was like, man, so disappointed because like I've done all of this stuff and nobody knows about it. Mm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And that was probably one of the few moments that I did, like, care like, yeah. about, like, the fact that I know. Because, you know, I feel like even, like, the people on Forbes, like, they're not always, like, famous people. Mm. They're just people that have, they're people that also have impact. Yeah. You know, and that's what I care about. I don't care about the fame, I care about impact. Mm -hmm. You know, and the fact that I had done all this other stuff and, like, I was overlooked at first. It was like, it made me sad. But then look, I look back on that moment in that memory and I laugh now because yeah. it was a completely different thing and I have to trust my timing all the time. Mm -hmm. How would you say the music you've made has changed over time? Mm. Well I think it's grown up with me. I used to like you can see it in my personality right you can see my personality in my music like my songs like Boss and like all those other things I was such a hyper 19 year old mm -hmm. kid like you know what I'm saying it was very sassy very aggressive very um, out there now I can say those same things in an understated way you know yeah. and it's it's just it's just like me growing up you know it's learning different ways to say the same thing when I was a kid I might explode if I'm upset now I might talk to you in a calm way and use my lyrics and use those words and the tone of those to make it sound like a happy love song, even though I'm saying fuck you. <laughs> yeah. you know? What would you say have been your biggest challenges so far in your life? Mm. I don't know. It changes so often. I, like every time I think like, oh, this is my, this is a challenging thing for me. I um, I find out oh, this is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like. It's first it became it was the challenge of trusting myself, and then the challenge became making sure that I don't trust myself too much, you know, to the point where I'm not listening. And then it's like it'll change over time. I think those are things that come with your age and you growing up and going through the experiences. You know? mm -hmm. What does love mean to you? Hmm. Love means a new perspective because the person that you fall in love with most of the time it's going to have one completely different than you and yeah. it's only when you love somebody that you give a shit about their perspective yeah. you know and that you can actually see someone's perspective differently other than that a stranger could have a completely different perspective but it doesn't mean anything mm -hmm. to you so you don't it doesn't you don't open your eyes to that so love for me yeah means seeing the other side of things yeah the last question what do you want to be remembered for hmm I want to be remembered for changing my industry, whatever way that that is, whether it's changing certain laws in regards to songwriting 
or whether it's, you know, breaking records for songwriting, but uh, even outside of that, I, I think that I want to make sure that I can do something that affects the songwriters and, and artists that are going to come after me long after I'm dead. Yeah, I love this. This was awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>